Hey, this is Zach from Zachstronaut.com, and uh, I want to do a little video about some stuff I've learned about um, platformers, about platform games. So I've got a little picture here of our friend Mario, the kind of uh, you know definitive platform game in my opinion. And this video is also kind of about why Mario has a wide stance. You'll see that you know you're kind of looking at him chest down with his two feet wide apart and his head is turned sideways. Turns out I think there's a, a really good reason why um, you'll see this kind of sprite in a lot of platformers and it has to do with jumping. So I'm working on my own platformer um, and it's been kind of a learning experience today in particular. Um, I'm using this uh, Aki Habara uh, HTML5 game engine. I just thought I'd try it out. So I'm making this little game here where you can run and jump with this army guy, typical kind of platformer, and he shoots too. Anyway, so he runs and he shoots, and uh, so I've been learning about getting the kind of platformer jumping mechanics just right. You'll notice that my sprite here, his feet are pretty close together, and they're not really big feet that are wide apart, you know, the big relative to the body and wide apart like Mario. Um, turns out that's a problem. So, um, I don't know if you remember, but in Mario, you could walk your guy all the way, you could walk Mario all the way out to the edge of a ledge, where you'd, like this, where you'd have Mario with like kind of one tiny pixel of his foot on the ledge and the rest of him hanging off. Um, and that's how all the Mario games still work today. In fact, here's another um, HTML5 engine. This one's a commercial, 99 bucks, called Impact. If you play this game made with the Impact engine, you'll see this is a platformer, and you'll actually see the same thing. So we'll launch this here, um, and I'll jump this character up here on this ledge, and you'll watch if I tap over, get back up on here, kind of just tap over, you can see that I can get almost completely off the, or there you go. So I'm like basically off the ledge completely and I can jump. So Mario worked exactly the same way. So having these kind of feet really far apart allows you to get your guy way off the edge with still allowing one foot to be touching uh, so you're not kind of floating in midair. So that's again why Mario's feet are on far ends of this sprite so I can get the sprite way off the edge of the kind of cliff here, but still have a toe on the platform. Um, and you'll see here when my feet are really close together, I still need to be able to get my guy all the way off to the, the ledge. Quite a ways, actually. Um, but you'll notice if the feet are close together, you actually end up floating in midair. Because um, you need to be able to get the center point of your sprite really far off the edge. And if your feet aren't on the edges of your sprite, then your feet are going to be floating over midair when the center point is. So that's why you have those wide stances in the sprites. So now the question is, why is it so important to let your guy get all the way over to the edge? Well, let me show you actually, this is not the default Aki Habara behavior. Imp you know, Impact does it right, but I had to do some changes to Aki Habara. So let me show you the default platformer for Aki Habara. So this one's called Leave Me Alone. It's the uh, example, the, the reference platformer. Um, and uh, it'll load in a second here. And what we're going to see is the default behavior here is just um, to fall off the platform uh, as soon as the center point of your sprite is over the edge. So if I tap over here, you'll watch, boom, I fall down. So rather than being able to put almost my entire body off the platform, I can only put just barely half my body off and I fall off the platform. That ends up being a really big problem for jumping because we're all used to playing Mario and it doesn't work that way in Mario, and we've kind of trained our brains around how Mar Mario works, that's one part of the problem. But there's actually another really major problem in that when we're watching a, a character run in a game, 
we're kind of, um, our brains are just instinctively watching kind of the, the feet in, in the edge of the platform simultaneously. So you need to be able to jump when you're almost all the way off the edge of the platform. You still got one foot. Uh, your back foot is still on that platform, and if your back foot is still on the platform, you want to be able to jump. That's how it worked in Mario, and it just seems intuitive to be able to do that. So I'm going to switch this over to that other sprite here, so this uh, could be illustrated a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to use the, the sprite from the reference game. So I've got to switch sprite sheets and animation frames here. We'll reload. So now I've changed it so that I can walk this guy here well well to the edge before he falls off. See so in my change you have like just barely a toe on the platform and you're still on the platform. See? So that's like Mario. You got the, the sprite with the wide stance, just like Mario's feet. And now, just like in uh, Impact and in Mario, you can get your guy almost off the edge. And this makes for good jumping, because I can jump, run and jump, and be all the way to the edge of that platform, and for the most part, time it correctly and get a jump, even when I'm right on the edge of that platform, which is kind of how I want it to work. Now. If I go back to the default code here, um, and I kind of undo my change, what we're going to see is it makes jumping extremely difficult. So here I've got the original behavior of Akihabara, and so if I kind of tiptoe to the edge of this platform, as soon as that first foot comes off the edge, I fall. And this makes it really hard to time your jumps. So I have to jump like really early, well before I get to the edge to do a jump. And if I wait till the last minute, what ends up happening is I hit the jump button and I just fall instead of jump because I'm I'm already I'm falling too early. So I, I you know I'm kind of thinking I can jump, but I can't, I'm falling instead. And it's really annoying. So let me walk you through the changes I made to the Akihabara code um, in order to fix this problem. Um, now I've commented out my changes um, and I'll show you kind of what I had to do. So here's this toys.js file that comes with Akihabara um, and this vertical tile collision function is one of the things that platformers uh, call. Um, so I've kind of got this modified version of the example platformer I've been using um, and in my player object, so here's my, my player object, um, there's this toys.platformer vertical tile collision which detects whether I should fall through a floor or go through a ceiling or hit my head or all that. So um, the way that it detects whether you're supposed to be falling through a floor or not is down here. It's got this um, tile is solid floor and you feed it a tile and the bottom tile is uh, you're getting a tile from the map based on the player's x position plus half their width. So there's that x plus half your width that's defining you know if half of your sprite is over the edge you fall. Um, so I needed to tweak that so I added this offset. Um, and 10 was a pretty appropriate number uh, for my um, for my size of sprite. And actually it would be uh, um, at first I just put in a number for heading to the right, so like uh, if we look at walking to the right, just adding that offset here of negative 10 um, will fix it for going to the right, walking left to right. So here I'll get up on this platform and I tap over and now I can get all the way off to the edge by just by adding this offset here. Um, but what about if I'm walking from right to left, coming off the left end of the platform? Now it's actually <laughs> it's worse than before. So that's where I had to have this um, this piece of code here that checks to see. Um, well, in, in Akihabara, you know, side is 
true if you're facing to the right and side is false if you're facing to the left or something like that. So this here checks to see which way the sprite is facing and then it uh, makes it either a positive or negative 10 uh, for this condition here. And so that, at first I thought, um, was the fix. And at first glance it seemed like it, so now I can kind of tiptoe off the both sides. I can tiptoe off this side, or I can tiptoe off this side, but here's the problem. If I just sharply turn around, I fall. So if I'm over here, tiptoeing off, turn around, I fall. Um, so that wasn't quite right. That was still kind of buggy. And also, now I miss my jumps. Like, I can jump up here and fall, fall right through, which is really bad news. So it turns out um, I had to grab two tiles. I need to grab the tile, you know, underneath me a little bit to the left and underneath me a little bit to the right. So I actually get rid of this side dependency and I just add another bottom tile with the positive offset and the negative offset so I get both tiles and then down here I check to see if uh, either of those are solid. So either, either bottom one or bottom two are solid tiles. Um, then I'm on a solid ground, otherwise I'm falling. And that actually ends up being a pretty decent fix. So here's that fix in action. Now I can tiptoe off this edge, and I can tiptoe off this edge, and if I do a sharp turn, I don't fall. And also I can jump up here and land on the edge and not fall. And my jumping, for the most part, uh, kind of feels a lot more like Mario, where I can get all the way to an edge and still jump without accidentally falling instead. So i got to say, I have a lot of respect for a uh, you know, 26-year-old platformer code. Um, you know, they, they created a pretty solid experience with platforming in, in Mario a long time ago now and uh, trained all of our brains pretty well about what to expect and it's pretty complicated to reproduce that I have to say um, I mean it's doable but it's easy to get it wrong um, finally I guess I'd like to switch this back quickly to uh, my new graphics and show you how that's going and some of the pitfalls there so um, biggest problem is that I do not have platformer appropriate proportions of my sprite. I don't have the wide stance and big feet. So that means that um, same code but different sprite, my guy can get both feet completely off the platform and be floating in midair. And again, that is why you see so many platformers have sprites with wide stances and big feet. So what I would actually have to do um, is have a condition in my code that basically changes this uh, offset here and makes it the bit offset 10 if you're walking or running and much smaller if you're standing still. So if I'm standing still I get to the edge I'll fall when both feet are off but if I'm walking since you can see when I'm walking my feet are pretty a lot farther apart um, you know I'll have more of an offset more tolerance while walking so that I can still nail those jumps off the edge of the of the platform. So, yeah, quite a few tweaks um, to get the platformer experience to be a little bit more of that Mario gameplay level. Um, certainly learned a lot about platformers doing this. I uh, hope that you learned something from this video. All right.